Welcome to a review lesson on sign numbers. Looking at the number line, all of the positive real numbers are located to the right of zero, or all the numbers that are greater than zero on the number line. As we move right on the number line, we approach positive infinity, and all the negative real numbers are to the left of zero, or all the numbers on the number line that are less than zero in this direction here. As we move left of the number line, we approach a negative infinity. And because we determine whether a number is positive or negative, based upon whether it's less than or greater than zero, zero is neither positive or negative. And now let's review absolute value. The absolute value of a number is the distance that number is from zero on the number line. We indicate absolute value using vertical bars as we see here. So the absolute value of negative three is equal to the distance negative three is from zero. Looking at the number line, here's negative three and here's zero. This distance is equal to the absolute value of negative three, which you can see is one, two, three units. So the absolute value of negative three is three. Next we have the absolute value of positive three, which is the distance three is from zero which would be this distance here, which notice the distance from three to zero is also one, two, three units. So the absolute value of positive three is also three. Notice how both negative three and positive three are the same distance from zero. Next we have negative absolute value of negative three. Well, if we want the opposite of the absolute value of negative three, and we already know that the absolute value of negative three is three, so this part is equal to three, but because we have this negative outside the absolute value, where we want the opposite of this absolute value, this is equal to negative three. And then finally we have the absolute value of zero, and because zero is zero units from zero, the absolute value of zero is zero. Now let's review the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of sign numbers. Before we look at the addition and subtraction though, remember that adding a negative is equivalent to subtracting a positive, and subtracting a negative is equivalent to adding a positive. And we explained why this is in a previous lesson. So looking at 2a, notice how we have three plus negative two, which if it's helpful we can rewrite as three minus positive two, which we know equals one. But let's go ahead and model these using the number line. So to model three plus negative two, or three minus two, we start by modeling positive three. So starting at zero, we move right three units. And then whether we add negative two or subtract positive two, we would move left two units from three in this direction here, giving us the result of positive one. Next we have negative three plus two. Again, let's go ahead and model this on the number line. So to model negative three, we start at zero and move left three units. So here's negative three. But because we're adding positive two from here, we'll move right to two units, which gives us negative one. So negative three plus two equals negative one. I also like to use a money analogy to determine the sum and difference of integers, where we can think of negative three as a three dollar loss, and because we're adding positive two, this would be like a two dollar gain, so if we lose three dollars and then we win two dollars, we're still down one dollar, giving us a sum of negative one. For C, notice here we have negative three minus negative two. Let's write this as an addition problem minus negative two is equivalent to plus two. So we can write this as negative three plus two, which we just did in example B. We know this sum is negative one, which is also muddled here on the number line. And then finally for D, we have negative three plus negative two, which of a one or two we could write as negative three minus two. Let's go ahead and muddle this on the number line. So we first start with negative three, so from zero we move left three units. And then because we're adding negative two or subtracting two from here, we move left another two units, which gives us negative five. 
So negative three minus two equals negative five. Thinking this in terms of money, we can think of negative three as a loss of three dollars, and then minus two or plus negative two would be like losing two more dollars, giving us a total loss of five dollars, giving us negative five. Now let's talk about multiplying and dividing. The rules for multiplying and dividing sign numbers are the same, where if we multiply or divide two numbers with the same sign, as we see here and here, the result is positive. And if we multiply or divide two numbers with different signs, as we see here and here, the result is always negative. So for example, 3a, we have negative five times negative six. So because we have a negative times a negative, this product is positive 30. For b, we have three times negative four. We have a positive times a negative, and therefore this product is negative 12. And then for c, we have negative 24 divided by eight. We have a negative divided by a positive, and therefore this quotient is negative three. Remember the fraction bar means division. And then for D we have two thirds times negative one fifth. We have a positive times a negative, so we know our product is going to be negative. And then to multiply the fractions, we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Two times one is two, and three times five is equal to fifteen. So notice how our product is negative two fifteenths. Before we continue, let's talk about how we indicate negative fractions. Notice how here we have the negative in front of the fraction, two fifteenths, which is the most simplified form of this product. But it's also true that negative two over positive fifteen or positive two over negative fifteen is equivalent to negative two fifteenths. But this form here is considered the most simplified. So this is the form we should use when indicating a negative fraction. For example, four, we want to evaluate the following exponents. Looking at these first two examples, notice how here we have a negative five in parentheses, raised to the second power, and here we just have negative five squared. It's important to recognize the difference between these two. In this first example, we're squaring negative five, which means this is equal to negative five times negative five, which is equal to positive twenty-five. But here, negative five squared really means the opposite of positive five squared, so the negative is not attached to the exponent. This is equal to negative five times five, which is equal to negative twenty-five. So it's extremely important that we recognize the difference between these two. Here we have negative five cubed. Again, because negative five is in the parentheses, we have three factors of negative five, so this gives us negative one hundred twenty-five. And here we have the opposite of positive five cubed or negative five cubed, which is negative and then five times five times five, which does give us the same result of negative one hundred twenty-five, but for a different reason. Here we only have one negative, here we have three negatives. And for our last example, we want to simplify the given expression using the order of operations. Following the order of operations, we simplify inside the parentheses first, which doesn't apply here. So for the next step, we want to simplify the exponents. So we'll first simplify negative two cubed and positive five squared. So we'll have negative eight and then divided by negative two cubed is equal to negative two times negative two times negative two, which equals negative eight. So we have negative eight divided by negative eight, and then we have minus negative three, and then we have minus positive five squared, which is five times five or twenty-five. The next step is to multiply and divide from left to right. So we'll find this quotient here. Negative eight divided by negative eight is equal to positive one. So now we have positive one minus negative three minus twenty-five. The last step is to add and subtract from left to right. So notice here we have one minus negative three, which we can also write as one plus three minus twenty-five. So here we have one plus three, that's four. 
four minus 25 is equal to negative 21. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.